Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. It's Joe Sports Grid. It's time for a pocket with Joe. Oh my God, let the craziest season of hockey begin. I tell you, last night, I'm shocked I have a voice today after screaming that Red Wings game was so phenomenally good. How they were able to come back versus Montreal. Now they got to face them again today. We're in for some great games. The Islanders did clinch the third spot in the Metro. And guess who took the President's Trophy? Yes, the New York Rangers able to take the President's Trophy first in the Metro. Phenomenal season out of them. And I want to hear if you guys believe in that President's trophy curse if you really do think that they're going to struggle in uh the playoffs now because of it you normally look at teams and how hard they push to finalize and they run out of steam in the playoffs and that's what i really think happens with that team that wins the president's trophy so we'll see what the rangers have in them my vote my voice is a little um different today <laughs> from screaming so Let's make this show quick here. We were not able to get Nikita Kucherov for the two plus assists last night. He got that first one so fast and then he wasn't able to get any more. Disappointing to see that Connor McDavid got his 100th assist. So he will be the first player in forever to be able to record 100 assists in a season. We got Austin Matthews looking to set records tonight with his 70th goal. Books know it though. It's juicy at minus 110. What else do we have happen last night? It was such a phenomenal night out there on the ice. Washington won, the Penguins won. The Red Wings won all of these teams that are fighting for that spot. And we know the Flyers won the other night. So things are just getting more and more and more complicated. And with that comes some difficult games today. I'm not going to lie, you guys. Some of these games I looked at and I just don't know what to take. So I'm going to talk out all of these games, tell you where I'm looking, if I was going to bet them, what I would do. But you got to be careful. So careful this time of year. Teams like the Seattle Kraken, how are they going to show up? How is Boston going to show up now that they know that um, the Rangers have clinched the President's Trophy? Do they want to be first in the Metro or do they want to fall down second in the Metro and get Toronto in the first round of the playoffs? There's so many question marks for me on these teams. Boston has lost their last two and they've been not looking like they've been showing up out there. We know they lost that last one to the Caps. So We'll talk out all of these. Let's jump into that first game. I see all of your comments coming in. Big shout out to each and every one of you. Appreciate you so much for being here. Okay, the first game we're going to talk about, first on the list, is like such an important one. The rematch of what we saw last night. The one that I almost lost my voice on. The Detroit Red Wings are taking on the Montreal Canadiens. Now, current odds on this have moved significantly. So before... The Red Wings won last night. They were minus 152 on that money line to get the win today. And we saw Montreal plus 126. Now with so much on the line, Detroit's moved to minus 192. The Montreal Canadiens at plus 158. Total sitting at six and a half. We saw a high scoring one yesterday, minus 105 to the over, minus 115 to the under. Now for Detroit to make the playoffs, they need help. Their destiny is not completely in their hands. So they're sitting here with 89 points, fifth in the Atlantic. They need a win plus the Capitals to lose in regulation or overtime. And then um, they still have a chance of making the playoffs. Or they need, if they lose tonight, they could still win if they lose in overtime. So they need to get into overtime, get the one point. They could still get into the playoffs. If Washington loses in regulation and the Pittsburgh Penguins lose to New York tomorrow. So lots of question marks here for the Red Wings. It seems like a puzzle piece trying to put it together, how these games are going to fall into place. But I do think the Red Wings, with knowing that they don't control their own destiny, still bring the best of what they have out there. Now they got off to a slow start in the last game, and we keep seeing them either get up to a fast start and blowing it or getting off to a slow start and falling apart. I think in this one, we can count on four goals out of them. We know the lack of resistance Montreal gave them on the defensive side, especially once they started clicking that first period. They weren't able to get those shots on goal. We had 12 plus shots at plus 125 for the over. I think they only ended up hitting like eight. Um, but I do think in this one, the Red Wings, oh, team total over three and a half at minus 116 is a solid way to go, especially when you look at Montreal and their schedule. They gave it everything they had last night trying to get that win. 
you got to love what you saw out there. Sam Montague was playing fantastic from you, will be in net. They've lost six of their last seven. They're one, three, and three in those, though. They've been able to push these games to OT. So we could see Montreal again push this one to overtime. That's where those losses have been coming for the Montreal Canadiens, and we saw it again last night. So the overtime coming in here at plus 370. Now, one of the players who was hugely impactful last night he was able to tie up the game and get the overtime goal was Lucas Raymond. His point tonight's minus 140. It is a juicy two plus points is coming in at plus 350. Could he get there? He could. His three plus shots on goal, I think I like better. It's coming in at minus 114. He's had three or more shots in five of his last six games out there on the ice. And like I said, the two goals last night, one to tie the game, one to win it in overtime. Looking at him over his last six games, he has, or sorry, four games, he has six goals and, no, five goals and six assists. And you're always going to be able to get that out. So he's been phenomenal out there for the Red Wings. I would look for him to come out nice and strong again today. You're going to get the best out of the Red Wings tonight. You have to. Dylan Larkin for the anytime goal, I do like as well. Dylan Larkin has to come out phenomenally strong. If the Wings win, they have more wins than the Caps or the Penguins. Okay, yes, they will have more wins, but the wins in regulation, um, the Caps win that tiebreaker because the the uh, Caps have more wins in regulation. It is so confusing, you guys, looking at these standings. Big hello to the world. I like hello world. Good vibes sending out to you. Florida vibes. Those must be like some nice warm vibes compared to here in Calgary. So Wings in reg. I like the, the wings just to get the win here again. The juice is too high. I could see Montreal pushing this one tight. But Mont Montreal has been on a road trip. So we could see them struggle here coming off that game last night where they gave it their all. Okay, let's move on to the next game, you guys. I am on game time decisions for uh, talking hockey and baseball tonight. I'll be on at 6.40 Eastern as well, 7.12 Eastern. So 6.40, we're going over some of those earlier games. And the 7.12 Eastern mark, we will be going over some of those later games. So make sure you join me. We swept uh, the first three plays on the Baseball Diamonds yesterday, but the Dodgers did me no good at the end of the night. The Washington Capitals take on the Philadelphia Flyers. This game is going to be insane. These two teams fighting for that wild card spot. Now we have the Washington Capitals with 89 points right now. Um, they're sitting in that last wild card spot. So the Red Wings, the Penguins, and the Flyers are all trying to take it from them in the Eastern Conference. When we look at the Flyers, they have 67 points. They need a win in regulation for a chance to keep their playoff hopes alive. If they allow this one to go to overtime, their playoff hopes are done. We're going to get some major lockdown defense here in this game. Both of these teams aren't going to want to make a mistake. I expect a low scoring battle out there on the ice. Now, if this gets into a higher scoring one, I will be blown away. I just want to check goaltending here because I do think the Washington Capitals will be starting Darcy Kemper, and I want to see if there's any confirmations on it. There's no confirmations on Darcy Kemper confirmed yet in net for the Washington Capitals. I would start Charlie Lindgren again. When your season comes down to depending on it, I would rather have Charlie Lindgren in net for me if I'm the Washington Capitals. I do think the Flyers might have the opportunity to pull off this win at home, and the books are thinking. So the line on this one is minus 134. Now, I love the Washington Capitals and everything we've seen out of them. I would expect Ovechkin to come out nice and strong, especially on that power play, looking at his power play point tonight. But I do expect this to be a lower scoring game, so I don't want to hit player props. This total of five and a half plus 104 to the under, minus 128 to the over. I'm going to look at the first period. The first period under one and a half is coming in at minus 112. Second night of a back to back here for the Washington Capitals. And if Darcy Kemper's in goal, it does give me a little bit of fear with this one, you guys, because we know sometimes he can let in those early goals. If he lets in an early two, I'm going to be absolutely fuming out there if the Flyers go into the second period two to nothing. They are going to bring in, they're going to do everything they can to try to get up in this one and then drop back and play defense and protect their lead. The Washington Capitals will try to do the same. And that's why I think. We won't see those mistakes in the first period. I could see this one being 0-0 going into that third. So give me no player props. See, overtime bet, I can't even find on the books. Let me see if they have them now because when I looked an hour before um, we came on, FanDuel is not offering overtime 
on this game. That tells you something. It really does tell me this game probably goes to overtime. Let me know if you guys are getting an overtime number out there because FanDuel is too scared to put the overtime line out for this one. Lingren, Charlie Lingren is confirmed. Last man, that is making my day because that makes this play even stronger. Charlie Lingren able to get the shutout last night versus the Boston Bruins. Now the Bruins didn't put up many shots. So remember that the Bruins didn't come to play. And that's my biggest question mark around today. Will the Bruins come to play? Um, but Charlie Lingren, he has kept this team in playoff contention. So the under one and a half in the first period is coming in at minus 112. We know that the Flyers are solid on home ice. and the Caps have been shaky on the road. So, you guys, this is going to be an interesting one. I would take it to overtime if your book's giving you even plus 300 on the overtime bet here. Could be 0-0 zero, zero going into OT and then a shootout needed in this one. I really do think that's how strong of a battle we have between these two teams. Neither wants the loss. Let's look at the next game here. We got to talk about the Boston Bruins versus the Ottawa Senators. Now, we know the Sens are playing that upset role, and they absolutely love to do it. The Boston Bruins are a huge favorite here. They're coming in at minus 220, plus 180 for the Ottawa Senators, and this total sitting solid at five and a half. Uh, the over five and a half at minus 124, and the under at plus 102. What we saw last night out of the Boston Bruins, they did not come to play at all. They lost that game last night to the Washington Capitals 2-0. to zero. Charlie Lindgren always plays them strong, though, um, but they completely didn't show up. They weren't able to get those shots on goal. So they're sitting first in the Atlantic with 109 points. The Panthers are only one point ahead of them. I think they show up enough to get the win here. My problem is, do they get a puck line win here? We know this team. How many games during the regular season did this team have to win it in overtime. They struggled to close out games in 60 minutes. So I'm looking at this one with a scrappy um, upset mode Ottawa Senators team. We could see that come into play today. Before I took the Boston Bruins on the puck line, I would seriously look at the Ottawa Senators plus one and a half. That plus one and a half, I just want to see if we're still getting value on it. It's minus 140. At minus 140, I'd take the plus one and a half on the Ottawa Senators. And yes, I know that's asking a lot, but I really don't trust in the Bruins to show up tonight. If the Sens keep it tight, they probably win this. Brady Kachuk has been absolutely phenomenal for them this season. 37 goals and 73 points. He's leading the Senators in points. He's had three goals and two assists in his last two games. So he's been nice and solid out there, you guys. I just don't know what motivation the Bruins have. If now they're out the running for the president's trophy, if they fall down to second in the Atlantic, they will face the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team that they have been very strong against. If they fall down or if they stay at first in the Atlantic, they will face that last wild card spot in the Eastern Conference, which they just lost to one of those contenders last night to the Washington Capitals. So I think they want the win here, but. I don't know, you guys. It's a lot to ask. Washington didn't show up, or did the Rangers just dominate? I watched that game, and the Rangers were phenomenally strong. They wanted to prove a point going into the playoffs, and that was a Monday game. Playoffs don't start till Saturday. The Rangers absolutely knew that they could get up in that game, make a statement, win, and walk off with their heads high, winning uh, the President's Trophy, and I really do think that's what we saw last night. Okay, let's look at the Carolina Hurricanes and the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Carolina Hurricanes, actually, you guys, if you're looking at odds, are the favorite to win the Stanley Cup. They roll in here as a large favorite versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. So we're looking here at them. Oh, interesting. We've had some line movement on this. So they're now only a minus 150 favorite to win this. When I looked earlier... Okay, even as of last night, they were minus 300. Plus 125 here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Total of five and a half, minus 138 to the over, and plus 112 to the under. Spencer Martin is getting the start for the Carolina Hurricanes, and Jack Greaves getting the start for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, he's had a rough season. He's gone two and six with a 355 goals against average and a 906 save percentage. So trusting in Jack Greaves to hold off the offense here, of the Carolina Hurricanes is a lot to ask. This is one of those games that I don't love, you guys. The Carolina Hurricanes have won their last five. We know this team is rolling uh, strong. They're sitting second in the Metro, and this is, I think, when the odds change. This is a game I don't want to bet, but we're going to talk it out in case you can find a bet within my logic. Um, 
So last night before they could have taken over, I guess the Metro, maybe with the Rangers loss that these odds shifted. So now they're only minus 150 favorites. They've got 111 points. They can't move anywhere. We look here at the Columbus Blue Jackets, 64 points last in the Eastern Conference. Um, the Canes looking to sweep. They've won all three meetings versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. And we look at Columbus. They've only had three wins in their past 14. But the thing is, on their home ice, this team hasn't been so bad as of late on their home ice. The last four games on the road included losses to extremely strong teams. And that first loss came to the Carolina Hurricanes 3-0. to zero. So they didn't blow them out of the water. It wasn't like this was a 7-0 to zero win or a 9-1 to one like we saw Mont or Edmonton do to the Sharks last night. So... I do think here Carolina is the right side, but you, you got to be so careful backing teams that are locked in with nothing to play for here. I don't know what their motivation is coming out in this one. They are seven and three on the puck line in their last 10 on the road. And we have seen uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets go one and four in their last five games as an underdog. I would stay off this game personally. I think if you want to look at some player props, uh, Jake Gunsell has been so strong for us. He's been getting us that money with the Carolina Hurricanes. He has eight points um, in his last eight games. So six goals and two assists over that time. Sebastian Ajo, you can never go wrong with, or Seth Jarvis. So I would look at those players. But honestly, you guys, this is one I'm not going to bet. I, I just can't get there with my money with a team that is completely locked in. They should win it. They absolutely should. But will they? This could be Columbus's one to win and finish the season strong. Okay. We got another game. Missing players. Yeah. And you know what? There's going to be players that um, rest as well. Yeah, they need to help the Blue Jackets fans. You're right. So maybe they get the win. Carolina has won five. Yeah. And yeah, they have. Carolina should. Everything makes sense that Carolina comes out and gets this win. Just what are we going to see out of these teams? And they have. They've been weak against that spread, too. You guys, it's a stay off for me. You guys do what you want with it. I get worried about teams that are locked in. I don't know their motivation. And unless I could listen more to what the Carolina uh, Hurricanes head coach has said, which I haven't. Um, I can't get a bet in it. So I would stay off it. If anything, I'd be looking at Columbus's team total to the over with Spencer Martin. In net, I could see them getting over two and a half goals. I could see them scoring three goals in their last game here at home. The next game, the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Florida Panthers. And I don't want to put money on Columbus. That's why I'm not betting that game. Uh, Toronto versus the Florida Panthers, this game is going to be crazy. Okay, so you have Toronto coming out. Austin Matthews wants his 70th goal. We know that, okay? You also have what could be the preview. If the Florida Panthers stay in second in the Atlantic, this will be the first round of the playoffs. How much of a hand does either team want to show the other is my biggest question mark. Now, the Florida Panthers are sitting... Um, with 108 points, they're trying to catch the Boston Bruins that have 109. If they get the win here, um, and then Boston loses tonight. So Boston has to lose. They're playing the Senators, and the Florida Panthers get the win. The Florida Panthers will take first in the Atlantic. Which team wants first in the Atlantic more is my biggest question mark. The Toronto Maple Leafs have nowhere to go. They're sitting locked in third in the Atlantic. They're not moving up or down based on this win tonight. They would be reckless to come out here and try to dominate over the Florida Panthers. And I think the Florida Panthers would be reckless to come out and try to dominate over a team that if Boston wins tonight, which is Boston, you know they're coming off a loss last night, that you'll show your whole hand to. So what are we going to get, you guys? I think this is probably the preview here. I can't, well, the Senators could beat the Boston Bruins tonight, but we're going to have to see what happens in this one. This is a player prop bet for me in this. I do think the Florida Panthers get the win because I think this team wants to take that first spot in the Atlantic. If they take this first spot in the Atlantic, that is the best case for them because it's going to be very hard versus Toronto. We know they eliminated Toronto in the last um, playoff season, but 
that revenge factor for Toronto and how Toronto's been playing this season, I do think is a better team than what we saw go into the playoffs last year. So I think the Florida Panthers absolutely want this win. Toronto's not going to make it easy on them tonight. But like I said, it'd be very reckless for Toronto to come out and expel all their energy when playoffs start on Saturday. I would save it. I would load management these players out here. But hey, I'm not a head coach. So I don't know. I don't know how they're going to play this one. They also, the Toronto Maple Leafs have the Tampa Bay Lightning on deck tomorrow. So they've got two games in a row. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. Wednesday will be their last game before the playoffs start on Saturday. They should rest players. They should rest everyone. Okay, so where am I going? Player props. Austin Matthews for his 70th goal. It's kind of scary because we know the, um, the Panthers have really limited their opponent's ability to get those goals are actually in their second in goals allowed with an average of only 2.42, but it's Austin Matthews. We know his strength, you guys. When we look at Austin Matthews, he has 69 goals, so hitting that 70, he scored eight in eight straight games. Last time versus the Panthers, he was able to put up two goals versus Florida in his career. He's got 15 goals and 25 in 25 games, seven goals in the last seven meetings. So he has been very strong versus the Florida Panthers. I would look at him to come out, find the back of the net just once. Now, Austin Matthews and Sam Reinhardt of the Florida Panthers are both on an eight-game goal streak. No one really talks about anyone else except for like these head guys, like Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, Nikita Kucherov, Nathan McKinnon. But there are other players that are hugely impactful out there on the ice. So Sam Reinhardt, for the Florida Panthers for the goal tonight, it's coming in at plus 135. If you can find him for the power play point, I absolutely love it tonight. My problem is FanDuel's not offering the power play point tonight, so I can't give you odds on it. I'm expecting it to be about plus 215, maybe um, plus 189, 90. He's been phenomenal on that power play. He's leading the league with the most power play points at 27. He's been absolutely phenomenal. He's so hot out there. Now he has 55 goals on the season. So we know the leader in goals is Austin Matthews with 69. Did you guys realize Sam Reinhardt is the second in the league with those 55 goals? It is huge for him to come out here and get a goal tonight. So at plus 135, I love Sam Reinhardt to get that anytime goal. Like I said, it is Austin Matthews at 69, and then Sam Reinhart, the next leader in the league at 55. So let's count on both of these guys to come out nice and strong. I'd also look at um, uh, Matthew Kachak for the assist tonight or Barkov for the assist. Both of these players have been so phenomenal for getting those assists on the board. Matthew Kachak has 60 assists on the season a huge number and Barkov 55 assists on the season so pretty phenomenal what we're seeing player prop game for me I do think the Panthers win it but again too juicy yeah Hyman for the Leafs is right behind him let's go Hyman for Hyman is with the Oilers so Leafs let him go yeah the Leafs let him go Zach Hyman's been playing absolutely phenomenal. Okay, the Seattle Kraken and the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets need one point tonight, and they'll walk up that second spot in the Central to be able to um, get home ice advantage over the Colorado Avalanche. So we already know it's the Jets and the Avs will be playing each other in the first round. It just depends who gets home ice. I do think the Jets get one point tonight. Minimum, I do think they get two. I think they get this win. The Seattle Kraken have been struggling to score out there. I'm taking their team total under two and a half, but it's juicy, you guys. It's minus 150. So I would look at the Jets in the first period. I kind of played around. I took um, the Kraken under two and a half goals. I took Kyle Connor, put it with him for over two and a half shots on goal, three plus shots on goal. And that was coming in at like minus 130. And I combined those. So the Kraken under two and a half goals and Kyle Connor for three plus shots on goal. Combine those to get better value. I think I got it up plus 120 then. But for straight up bets, I'd look at the Winnipeg Jets in the first period on the puck line laying the half a goal that's coming in at plus 130. I think they get off to a quick start, then lock down. 
and hold this lead. We will see Connor Hellebuck in net tonight. The Jets have won their last six games. They're off that huge win versus the Colorado Avalanche, 7-0. to zero. And we have a Seattle team in here that scored two or fewer goals in five of their last eight games. This team is eliminated, and they're not playing great. Jared McCann had a great quote. He said, it's hard to find motivation. Okay, as soon as you hear a player say it's hard to find motivation, I am not backing that player or this team for anything. He said, but we play for each other. So he did say a but, and he said, we can't shy away from the battles or anything like that. If anything, it's our tryouts for the next year, which is very true. These players need to come out strong, finishing the season, especially the ones that are going to be free agents. So we'll see enough out of the Kraken where it's not completely sloppy out there, but the Jets defensively and Connor Hellebuck should be able to hold them off the scoreboard. And I do think the Jets get up first. So the Jets on the puck line in the first period, minus a half a goal at plus 130. But again, remember, if this is in the third period and somehow we have seen the crack and push this game to a 2-2 game, the Jets just want to get it to overtime. They pick up that one point and they are done. This team cannot risk getting hurt. Injuries to the Winnipeg Jets this late in the season is not what they want circled here. So be careful with that because if the Kraken decide to turn it on and the Jets decide to go to sleep in that third period, we could have a game where the Jets uh, lose in overtime but still clinch that second spot in the uh, Central and they'll be completely happy with that. So that's what I mean. Being careful betting this time of year is crazy. Yeah, Jared McCann is a checked out. I agree. Winnipeg needs a win. They just need to get to overtime. Does Winnipeg care? I completely agree. They want the one point. They want the home ice. I also saw a couple of statements by them. Home ice or not, we just, we, we will turn up basically how we're going to turn up to this game. They're not, they don't sound too concerned. And Connor Hellebach and Boussois, strong goaltending this team at home and on the road, not too bad of a record. So they were 50, 24, and 5, and 1 overall, and 25, 11, and 3 at home. Okay, guys, we're going to fly through these last two games again. Join me on Game Time Decisions at 640 Eastern. So in the next 30 minutes here, and then also make sure you come back at 712 or just stay tuned. Kevin Walsh has a fantastic show over there. You guys don't want to miss it. The Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Vegas Golden Knights is a 10 p.m. Eastern matchup. Now, Vegas is coming in here off a three-goal comeback versus the Colorado Avalanche. And if you didn't watch that game, holy heck, was that crazy? That was just like the Detroit game the other day. As soon as one of these teams starts to get momentum, you guys, the Detroit Red Wings, when they were down, they were plus 420 on the money line going into the third period, plus one and a half on that puck line. It was something crazy like plus 152. So hopefully you guys saw my Twitter. Always stay tuned to that during these games because I will post stuff like that that I'm jumping on. Um, the ability for teams, once they get momentum, to come back and get that a flow going out there on the ice is crazier than any other sport that I watch. So looking at Vegas, they were able to do the same thing versus Colorado. They're sitting here with 96 points, second wild card in the Western Conference. They're only one point behind the LA Kings who have 97 points for that third in the Pacific instead of having that wild card. So if they land in the second in the wild card, they've got a heck of a path. They then have to play the Dallas Stars. If they finish third in the Pacific, they have a heck of a path. They have to face the Edmonton Oilers. Either way, the Vegas Golden Knights are in for a hard first round of the playoffs. Will they be able to make it out of the playoffs versus either of those teams? Honestly, I think they have a better chance against the Edmonton Oilers because Skinner. And that's what it comes down to for me. It, And I hate to say it's Skinner. It's goaltending there. I just... Don't like the support the defense gives. So when I say goaltending, it's also the support because we know a strong goalie is only as strong as their blue line as well. If they've got a very weak goal line, like we see out of the team Vegas is playing tonight, one of the worst blue lines in the league, the Chicago Blackhawks. So Peter Morazic, you put him on another team behind a solid blue line, and these goaltenders' numbers look so much better. I do feel for Stuart Skinner because it is the defense. When Connor McDavid decides to play both ways of the puck, the Edmonton Oilers are a better team. When those forwards both all play, both sides of the puck that team is able to limit those goals and Skinner 
is able to make the key saves, it's because he's not getting absolutely peppered out there on the ice. So a goalie is only as good as their blue line. And if that blue line isn't solid, like the Chicago Blackhawks tonight, you're in for disaster. So looking at Vegas here, they do probably want this win, probably don't want this win. I don't know. Teams, <laughs> teams, do they want to face Dallas or do they want to play Edmonton? I would say Edmonton, so I would think they would want to get this win. Facing the Dallas Stars on their home ice with Jake Ottinger and goal would be an absolute nightmare. So give me Vegas to bring everything that they have. I'm going to look at that first period over one and a half because, again, I don't trust the defense here. The blue line of the Chicago Blackhawks, I do think Vegas could get up very quick in this game. But Chicago, you know, we could count on them for one. I More likely, it's two to zero going into the second period. So the first period over one and a half at minus one. 132. I'm going to circle William Carlson here of the Vegas Golden Knights for the goal or his two plus points tonight. I think both are a really solid way to look as well as Jack Eichel for two plus points. He's on the top power play as well. So if you want to look at those power play points, the problem here is I wasn't able to get any odds over on FanDuel. They have come up now, thankfully. It was all locked up. So the two plus points for Jack Eichel's coming in at plus 124. They are not giving me any power play points here. I hate that. So no power play points. If you can get power a power play, just one power play point for Jack Eichel on your books tonight, I would look at that. Um, William Carlson, again, they're not giving me any odds for William Carlson. Are they making me take three points? The books are very, very limited tonight, especially on FanDuel at what you can actually bet on. They're limiting themselves with these players that have the ability. Now, William Carlson, you can get for the goal. So plus 195 for the goal, Jack Eichel at plus 110. Those are the players that have circled. Now, uh, Thomas Hurdle has been very strong for them as well. He's plus 185. Remember, he was traded over from the San Jose Sharks. So he scored the overtime winner in that game versus the abs where the um, Vegas Golden Knights were able to come back. And William Carlson was able to get those goals in that game that were hugely impactful to see them come back. Now, when will Mark Stone be back out there on the ice is the biggest question mark for me with the Vegas Golden Knights because we know how they love to play around with things. Now, I'm not seeing him listed and I'm just scouring right now, FanDuel. No props listed for him. There, I haven't seen any news to confirm if he will or he won't be playing. If he is playing and you see him hit that ice and you can still live bet the player a prop there, I would look at that. Now, the last game on the ice. We have the Calgary Flames taking on the Vancouver Canucks, and this one should be interesting. Vancouver is minus 210 here on the money line, and Calgary at plus 172. Total six and a half at minus 128 to the under. We have Demko back and go from that knee injury from the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Vancouver is sitting first in the Pacific with 107 points, with the Edmonton Oilers three points behind them. What are we going to get out of Vancouver in this one? Well, I'm expecting Vancouver to want to get the win. If they get the win, they they need the two points. They either win this one or they win on Thursday to take that first in the Pacific. They can still win first in the Pacific if Edmonton loses their last two games. So both of these teams have two games left. All Vancouver needs is to pick up a win in one of those those two points or overtime in both of those. Two points will get the win over um, Edmonton for the first in the Pacific. And I do believe Vancouver wants that. Now, I do think their way of winning this game tonight is giving Demko as much support as they can on the defensive side of things. Demko back from injury. He wasn't on the ice for the last 14 games with that knee injury. I do think he is ready, and they wanted to get him out there before the playoffs started, which is a smart move. He's a fantastic goaltender, and we know the Vancouver Canucks can lock down on the defensive side of things. So. I know I got to go against my Calgary Flames here, but I'm going to look at their team total under two and a half at minus 122. That being said, I do still think there is value here. I'm looking at a couple of players, even on Calgary for a power play point. Now, when we look at the players who were traded, so they went back and forth like this at the trade deadline. 
we know that Elias Lindholm from Calgary went to Vancouver and Kuzmenko came from Vancouver over to Calgary. Now, Kuzmenko has been absolutely phenomenal. His power play point tonight is minus 150. They have it juiced and they have it juiced for a reason. He's been able to get seven power play points on the season and he's been strong out there for Calgary. Calgary's power play is finally clicking. He has had nine goals and seven assists in the last nine games. So if you think that goal is coming, which I could see the goal versus his former team, even more value at plus 300 for Kuzmenko for the anytime goal. I love that. If you think he can get four or not four plus two plus points, it's plus 420. Now that's asking a lot because I think Calgary is going to stay under that team total of two and a half, but there's nothing better than looking at a team versus his former team. Now this will be a second time facing Vancouver, but you know that revenge factor is huge. And then you look at Elias Lindholm. Elias Lindholm from Calgary now with Vancouver just hasn't been living up to the production that Vancouver really thought they were going to get out of him. Remember at the trade deadline, they had got Elias Lindholm a couple weeks prior. And then we heard rumors that they were trying to trade him off somewhere else because he just wasn't meshing well with the team. So I do think this player, Elias Lindholm, has a lot to prove to the Vancouver Canucks. I think we get a full effort out of him. I think they keep him on the ice. I do think this is another game where we could see load management out of Vancouver as well. Yes, they want first in the Pacific. But like I said, you guys, they just have to push this to overtime, push the next game to overtime. And then they get those two points needed to clinch things up. And I don't know how hard Edmonton's pushing for first in the Pacific either. So Elias Lindholm for the anytime goal is what I'm going to hit here. That's coming in at plus 310. He has 14 goals and 42 points in 73 games this season. So it's going to be a great day out there on the ice. I can hardly wait to scream at my TV tonight. So if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, it's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to be yelling at my TV as loud as I can. Yeah, Vancouver hasn't looked great, but with Demko getting the start, this will be the one, Peter, I think they come out and they play solid defensively, giving Demko confidence going into the playoffs. Their next game out, I don't think we see anything out of Vancouver. I think they fall flat on their face. I think they get the win here, and Demko gets the support needed. And that's done. Now, if Calgary gets the win, I could see this being a two to one win for Calgary. I think it's a super low scoring game just because Demko needs that support out there on the ice. He needs to build that confidence. If Calgary comes out here and rattles him, Vancouver is going to be a mess in the playoffs. Demko cannot come out and get rattled. And yes, I'm not going to lose my voice. So I'm going to stop talking right now because it's getting even more raspy. I can imagine. I don't know sign language. So what would I do? I just talk through it. But <laughs> you guys be back here tomorrow. We've only got four games tomorrow. Maybe I'll just do a quick video. I'll do the live show. Um, join me on Game Time Decisions. I got a ton, ton of bets. I got three bets in the MLB for the early segment at 640 and four in the MLB for the late segment at 712. And then we've got Four games on the ice we're talking and two on the ice later on in the night. So you guys, join me in Game Time Decisions. If you don't know where to watch it, it is scrolling along the bottom, www.sportsgrid.com forward slash watch. Let's make some money, you guys. It is a good day to make some money. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Enjoy these games. I want to hear everyone screaming about them tonight, not just me, my poor neighbors. Bye, guys. <laughs>